everyone welcome to cancer healing journey talks myself sonali modi from community outreach team of zenonco.io and love heals cancer cancer healing journey talks help cancer survivors and caregivers to share their story with vast number of other caregivers and survivors who have traveled or been traveling through this journey it also motivates and inspires them for the faster recovery so firstly i would like to introduce you to today's speaker miss hanna stonehouse hudson she is a cancer survivor I'm happy that you are here with us today to share your story. So over to you, ma'am. Please start with your introduction. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I am Hannah, as you said, and I am a cancer survivor. And um, I'm less than a year into my journey, though, so I almost have a <laughs> am knocking on wood saying that. Um, but yeah, so I'm here and enjoying life. Yeah. So what cancer type it was and at what stage it got diagnosed? Um, so I had um, uh, DCIS, uh, breast cancer, ductal, uh, invasive ductal carcinoma um, and a stage two. Uh, at first we thought it was stage one, but it did end up being stage two after uh, we did the mammogram, uh, not the mammogram, the mastectomy. Okay. So what were the symptoms and how it got diagnosed? Um, so I uh, was doing a self-exam as I tell everybody to do. And I actually had put off a mammogram. Like everybody talks about like women put off mammograms because they think they're going to hurt. And I had mm. put mine off for two years, even though we have a definite history in our family of having breast cancer. Um, and I found a lump and I had been going, I am still going through some uh, other health concerns. And so uh, I went to my doctor and said, oh God, not another one. And mm -hmm. <laughs> we went through and um, uh, about a month later, that's when we figured out that I did have, um, did have mm -hmm. breast cancer. And I'm not sure how long it takes in uh, where you are or some other places where people are watching to get in to get a, a mammogram or get a biopsy, a mastectomy. Here, it can take a while um, mm -hmm. because we... We won't get into the healthcare situation here, but it can it can definitely take a while, and it did take a month for me, which I found out is actually pretty quick, which is slightly concerning. But that is is how it is. Yeah. So, what was your first reaction when you got to know that you were diagnosed with cancer, and how your family took this news? So for me, it was a little weird because I started laughing when they told me, which is not something that most people do. Uh, but I have so many other health issues going on that are very complicated and haven't been studied that I was almost relieved. I actually was relieved that it was something that had been studied. There are extremely good outcomes now. Things are very different than they were even 10 years ago. So for me, I laughed. Um, and it wasn't that I wasn't stressed or upset, but at the same time, it was almost a really, it was a relief that it was something not complicated, uh, for mm -hmm. me. Um, my family obviously, uh, was concerned. They live very far from me. Um, I had just dated, started dating a wonderful guy. We'd been only dating a few months. We we're still together. Um, mm -hmm. but he, we, our first year together has been about breast cancer. So that has been an interesting journey for sure. Yeah. So what treatment you underwent? Um, so I opted for a double mastectomy, uh, just going to flat due okay. to my family's history, due to the fact that, um, we do have, uh, some underlying autoimmune issues. So I didn't decide to do a reconstruction, which I'm fine with. Uh, and so I did that and then we ended up not, we decided not to do chemo or radiation, radiation. We didn't have to do because, uh, of the mastectomy, the double, uh, mm. but we decided not to do chemo, but what we're doing is, uh, Goslerin once a month, put me into menopause mm. and then, uh, aromatase inhibitors, uh, every day for the next five to 10 years. And we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay. And I so... don't really have bad side effects from them. So I'm okay with it. Yeah. So how many chemotherapy cycles you went through? Uh, uh, no chemo. No chemo. That was okay. Yeah. And did you try any alternative treatment? Uh, yes. So I, uh, acupuncture, uh, Reiki massage, um, healthy eating, 
uh, a biomed. I am very much into, uh, and my doctors are, which are fantastic, which I think is uh, can be unusual sometimes. They are very much into alternative methods of healing. Um, and so that was something that was really important to me with my care team, and they were very open to. So I have definitely done those things. And a lot of it is um, some from a functional approach, because what we want is to feel good so we can heal and our bodies can heal. So that has been, that's been very important to me. Yeah. And did you try the, did you, how did you manage your emotional well-being? Uh, therapy, therapy, journaling. One of my uh, things is, so I've been through a lot in my life. I'm, I'm a speaker on grief and loss. I, I help people get through things. I, I lost my husband at a very young age. And so mm -hmm. I, I have those coping mechanisms built in place. And so it, what has been interesting is a lot of the writing I did early on in my journey when I lost my husband has really helped me manage the emotions and grief that go along with a cancer diagnosis. And I didn't realize how similar they would be. Grief mm -hmm. is grief. And so we go through the shock of it the first year and sort of going into the second year of the journey or, or farther along, all of a sudden you're like, oh, you're not going through the through the motions of making decisions. You're not make, going through the motions of, uh, you know, the shock of it. And so yeah. you have to be aware that later on things are going to be more stressful because your brain doesn't have that like protective shock covering on it. And so that was something that was very important for me to know, because even in the past month or so, I've had a lot of, um, you know, uh, stress and anxiety about my diagnosis that I didn't have at the beginning of it. And that was very similar to when I lost my husband. It's like the shock happens. And so I try to tell people, you know, you're going to feel anxiety when you don't realize you're going to, when you think you've processed things. Um, so that's been really important for me is journaling and therapy and, you know, good nutrition. Yeah. So how was the experience with the doctors and other medical staff? Fantastic. I have a really great care team. So I was lucky. I don't know if it's lucky. So I have, since I've been through so much medicine prior in my life, I understand how uh, exhausting it can be to make appointments, not know what's going on and, and um, be on the phone constantly. And when you're in, uh, in cancer medicine, a lot of the time what happens is uh, you get a nurse navigator, they make phone calls for you. And that's what happened for me. So my care team was phenomenal. And I, I celebrate them very much because I don't, they may take for granted the amount of stress that they take off of the patient. But as someone who understands how exhausting it can be to walk into a situation and you don't have to make any appointments and they make phone calls for you and, yeah. and really are your cheerleaders, that's incredible. And that's anybody from the nurses, the techs, the doctors, the oncologists, nurse practitioners, everybody. So they were fantastic. Nutritionists, everybody. Yeah. So what were the things that helped you and made you happy on this journey? Helped me and made me happy. Taking, mm -hmm. photo, taking photos. I love taking photos. My dogs, my significant other, uh, running if I can, going fishing, being outside. Mm -hmm. It's really important for me to be outside and, yeah. and enjoy life. Uh, so just being in the moment and remembering not to obsess about my diagnosis, not yeah. to live that every single day of every moment. You are not cancer. You yourself, you have an entire life outside of that. And it's really important to focus on that so you can continue to be healthy. So your body can be strong enough to fight any yeah. sort of infections or other cancers. So how you felt when you first heard that you're cancer free? Uh, I was surprised. I didn't realize that. Like, so I, the whole thing to me, I don't know a, whole, a lot about it. I didn't realize that, you know, I had my mastectomy. They took the, what they thought were two tumors and it, ten, it happened to be one bigger one. And they took mm. it out and the margins were completely clear by a lot. And they said, oh, you're cancer free now. So I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and so I kind of thought things were over and they said, oh, no, 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 no. So you're cancer free, but... Um, with the type of cancer I had, the mm. estrogen positive, it feeds off mm. of that. So you have to be 
just because you're cancer free doesn't mean you don't have to take care of yourself. So I was surprised and I'm very thankful, but I didn't realize how fast that would happen for me in particular. Other people, obviously it's very different, uh, but mm. then being able and the scary, uh, when you read about these drugs that you take for five years, the aromatase inhibitors after you're cancer free, there's all kinds of scary um, articles about them. My advice to people is don't pay attention to that. Talk to your doctor, talk to your nurse, talk to the people who will give you the advice because every single person is different. And I actually mm -hmm. feel better than I did before on the aromatase inhibitors. And mm -hmm. that like, that does happen for some people, but you hear all these crazy, scary stories that it's, that it's going to be painful and that's yeah. not it at all. Yeah. So did you made any lifestyle changes during or after the treatment? Um, not really just because I was, I was working very hard to be, um, it, through my autoimmune diseases. We were trying to figure that out. So we were, we were looking at different ways of eating more healthy, uh, mm. and inflammatory diets, that kind of thing. So I was already doing a lot of that stuff. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, there are times when you feel that it's too much to handle but you still don't give up. So what was the one thing that motivated you and kept you going on such days? Um, the fact that bad times pass. I can say that till I'm blue in the face, but it is very, very, very true. And I took any of the hard things that came in my past and said, you know what? Those things have passed. The other mm. thing is, is to acknowledge that you feel badly, uh, acknowledge you feel badly and process that. Don't try to push it down. I think too many people try to push it down. And then what happens is you get sick. You do because your body can't necessarily handle that amount of stress. So really be in the moment, journal it out, pull it out of your system and, and give yourself the time to process those emotions. And those are grief emotions. So, yeah. you know, but also know that they will pass and things will get better. Yeah. So do you think that cancer has changed you in a positive way? Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, it has helped me understand that, um, the things that I learned before, uh, are uh, any lessons we learn, learn in the past mm. will help you in the future. I think that's something that I kind of had told people in my seminars and believed myself, but hadn't really seen it necessarily in a very a uh, tangible way. And I saw it here. We are all strong. I am, I, and I want people to understand that we are all strong and people can get it from anywhere. Uh, and I didn't realize I'd just be able to get right through it. So what life lessons you got from your cancer journey? Um, oh, so many. What life lessons? Uh, be with your grief, understand that it's grief, understand it's not the end of the world. Medicine is extremely good now. Uh, it's not, you're not, it's not a death sentence at all. Uh, and, you know, be positive and listen to your doctor's advice and don't, don't look at medical studies online. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how was your life after cancer? Great. Very, it's a transition is definitely a transition when you, uh, get a mastectomy and you are learning to dress differently, um, body image, trying to, you know, exercise again. I'm, I'm got cleared for exercise, but it's not, it's a completely different way of being. Um, mm. so, you know, transition through that is interesting. Uh, taking time to write things out, uh, life is great. And I've basically transitioned to enjoying every moment and, and being with the, the people I love. Yeah. So have you ever asked yourself this question? Why me? And if yes, then how you cope up with this thought? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I, I never, I've never asked that even when my husband passed away, even when I've had miscarriage or health concerns or any of that, I haven't because for me, that's a waste of time. I, for me personally, other people, yes, that's a very valid question for me. We just, things happen. 
So rather than obsessing over why, 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 mm -hmm. it's we move forward and we we um, either acknowledge the sadness and grief of the diagnosis and or the loss, and we sit with it, journal it out, and move forward, um, or we keep going and you know work on ourselves, work on our health, work on eating healthier. Um, mm -hmm. There are things to do. But for me, asking why me, there's um, there's no answer to that. So I'm just going to move on. Yeah. So what would be a message to other cancer patients and survivors? That it gets better. It's up and down, but it gets better. You are not alone. And there are others like us out there, obviously, but not just in the rah, 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 you can beat cancer, but in the, I need to take a nap. I don't feel good. I don't feel like a fighter today. Yeah. But don't, don't push that feeling down, work through it because the more you acknowledge that feeling, work through it, the healthier you will be in faster, mentally faster, physically faster, mm -hmm. but don't, don't let people, um, stop you from grieving that loss. So how did you overcome your fear of treatment or side effects? Um, I just went through it and did it. Uh, there's for me, it's, it's a fear, but it's also, you just do it. Um, you can't avoid it. You have to listen to your doctors and they'll help you or your doctors and your nurses, your nurse practitioners, nutritionists, all of those, um, and listen to them and they'll help you get through it. Hmm. Yes. So it is said that art or any creative thing works as healing. So have you tried any such thing, uh, during your cancer journey? Yes. So I, um, I love to draw. I love to paint. I don't do it very well, but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> Uh, writing. I love doing, I love writing, uh, photography. I actually picked my camera up again after about three years of not doing photography. Mm -hmm. And I was a photographer for a very long time, about 15 years. Um, so that's been really important to me. Um, but yeah, the, the creative process and, and getting lost in it. So you're not thinking about other things is really important. And it doesn't matter if you're good at it or not. It's just doing something else. Yeah. So when did you think that I can beat this disease or was this belief always there with you? It was always there. It was always there. It was never a question. And whether, I, you know, whether something happens later or not, um, for me, that's it. That is life. That is life's journey. So it was never, um, never a question. Yeah. So did you join any support group? If uh, so, then how did it help you? I didn't um, because of COVID, yeah. but I'm hoping this winter actually too. So that that's really important to me. Um, but I unfortunately was not able to because of COVID. I think that's a lot of people too. There's I'm on part of some online groups who are very fun and we all commiserate or celebrate depending on the day. Um, yeah. but so online groups have been very important. Yeah. So what do you think are the importance of such support groups? Um, knowing you're not alone, getting advice that is not necessarily medical advice, but things like uh, what should I bring to surgery? What will be something that'll make me feel better? Uh, mm -hmm. if you're, it's three in the morning and you feel like hell and you just need somebody to chat with, you know, they're there. Uh, so connection, not feeling alone, those sorts of things are definitely very important. Yes. So at zenonco.io, we help cancer patients through their journey, like from diagnosis to forever. So what do you think about our work? I don't know a whole lot about it. The only, the only cool thing I know is that's, that's what you're doing. So for me, helping people through the journey is very important because people don't walk into this, like knowing what they're doing. I'm very, I feel very lucky that I already had 
the journey through medicine and had doctors who were, you know, more of a holistic mindset and who I understood the whole thing of waiting for phone calls back or knowing that I have to be my own advocate. So an organization that can help people through that and help them find alternate ways of getting through um, treatment or creative outlets or any of that for me is huge. That's Mm -hmm. because that is something that's very important to me. And that I know I am lucky to have had those coping skills and had that information and had that knowledge. So that will take so much stress off of a person and their family. And even if they are, you know, they have stress, then they have an outlet to communicate. They have an outlet to not feel alone. They have an outlet to, you know, get their questions answered that might not be medical questions, but they don't know necessarily who to talk to about it. Yes. So do you have the fear of reoccurrence? And if yes, then how you deal with it? I do. And I'm working through that. That has just come up in the past couple of weeks, actually, Mm -hmm. Um, because I was working through so many other things. um, I didn't really think about it so much. And that, you know, that's right on track for the, for how I process uh, things. So, you know, I I haven't really thought about it a whole lot, but it is starting. And I think that's pretty normal is you don't think about it. And then all of a sudden you think about it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you think are the stigmas attached to cancer and the importance of awareness for it? I think there isn't really, what's interesting to me is with breast cancer, there doesn't seem to be a stigma at all around, it's such a pop, I don't mean it in a, in a, I don't mean popular, but it's so common, which first Mm -hmm. of all is an issue in itself, but people Mm -hmm. are so um, aware of it. So there is lots of money that is thrown at it. There's lots of money. And so I, what I wish people would do is uh, throw money at metastatic breast cancer, because from any of the studies I've seen, there's been lots of, there's been lots of studies and money with uh, like my type of cancer. And that's why I was so almost relieved that was something that what has been studied so much. Metastatic, on the other hand, hasn't been studied as much. So awareness of that is huge. Awareness of the fact that American women, women in the United States, really need support for financial means Mm -hmm. because of insurance, health insurance, deductibles, all of that. I mean, I have really good health insurance and I'm still paying, you know, thousands of dollars of bills. So, and I, so someone who doesn't have good insurance, you know, that that's a huge, a huge thing that needs to be studied. It needs, people need to know if you see someone who is asking for money for their cancer journey with a GoFundMe, they're not doing that. Um, it's just sort of a, oh, give me money if you can. There's a reason why, and they probably didn't want to ask, but mm. they have to. Um, So those are my two things I wish people would be aware of. Breast cancer, people are very aware of, but donating to research for metastatic breast cancer and then donating to people who are asking via GoFundMe if they know them, you know, give them some money. Don't just give money in October for Mm. the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, Mm. Do it anytime. Yeah. So if you have to sum up your journey in one sentence, then what would that be? Oh. Definitely exciting. <laughs> yeah. um, it has been interesting. It, it, and it's been um, eye opening. It's been relieving. It's been stressful. Sad. It's all the emotions. Breast can- my breast cancer journey has been full of all the emotions. I think that would be the one sentence. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for your valuable time. I hope thank this you. session. I hope this session really motivates people out there who have traveled or been traveling through this journey. So it was lovely having you here with us today on this session, Hannah. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day.